I'm so excited about not just what you're working on and what is happening today with the business, but where you're going. But I think you have a fascinating background, not a traditional entrepreneurial background. Yes. So before we even get into what RC21X is, mm -hmm. who is Clarence? Clarence Carlos is a, a gentleman who grew up, born and raised in Swickley, Pennsylvania. Graduated from Cornell High School out of Coropolis, Pennsylvania. Um, went on to play football at West Virginia University. Eventually took a commission in the United States Army as an officer. Um, was in the cable business for a while, um, but I, I did have some entrepreneurial background. So I did. I was I'm pretty much a serial entrepreneur. I was from the automotive business to cable industry, and eventually started building video games with with a team. And um, that's when we came across the concept of building a tool that could help monitor brain performance. What led you to coming up with a tool for brain well, performance well, for video a, games? A, a close friend of mine's son. Um, uh, he was sick one day, he sneezed really hard at a football game, and um, he got sick, went to the restrooms, and the um, police and the EMS thought he was on drugs. Well, him and his teammates were watching two other teams play a football game because they made him in the playoffs. And um, so they ended up taking him to the hospital. Eventually his parents showed up. They ran a CT scan and this kid checked him out just to make sure there were no injuries from the week from playing football or concussion or anything. They found out he was fine. There were no subdural hematomas or any bleeds like that. Um, they said, please, we want you to go see your primary care physician tomorrow. Well, this young kid, they took him home. He was slurred speech. They had to pick him up and actually sit him in the car. Oh, yeah. And um, Kyle, his name was Kyle Wilson. Kyle went home with his parents. Um, he laid in the bed. They watched him over the night to make sure he was okay. In the morning, he couldn't get out of the bed. Oh, so they had to rush him to the hospital. So they rushed Kyle back to UPMC Hospital in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The doctors began to check him out. They couldn't figure out what was going on. Eventually, Kyle stroked at 16 years of age and died. Mm. So sorry. Yeah. So that was my fraternity brother's son. We took it personal, and I've been on this mission for eight years. And we incorporated three years ago. And um, when they finally did an autopsy on Cal's body, they found out that Cal had a vertebral artery bleed in the neck from the sneeze. The plaque let loose in the neck, oh and God. it wasn't from a football injury. Wow. And yes. so, what a powerful story. And I'm so sorry. Um, you. When you were starting the company, that story resonated, and how did, how did it manifest itself in the initial idea for well, Arch it, it, Initially, I started working with some physicians because we were doing video game building, and, and I said, there's gotta be something out here. I never took a concussion test at all when I played football in college or high school, and I've had quite a few concussions. I said, but there's gotta be something out here for parents that are concerned about their kids that are stepping on the football field, or playing sports, or just a kid that may fall off a bicycle in a backyard, or even in a car accident. There's gotta be something out there that can help that parent check their kid at any given time and put the care kind of in the hands of the parent. And we started thinking through this, looking at different things, and we ended up teaming up the University of Texas Arlington and the Human Performance Institute. So on my side, I had a great team with Mark Kavikia, and um, Mark was able to help me get together and build this software with um, the general systems performance theory that they use at the University of Texas Arlington in human performance, which has over 50 years of science behind it. So these are table app, top apparatus, pen and pencil, that they use to gauge people on where their performance was, human performance. And we took that, built it into a video game that took about 12 minutes that you could play in your home, in a physician's office. On your phone. Or it's, that's coming. That's okay. going to be the first first quarter of this year coming up. That's going to be the new app piece. It's going to take about six minutes. And that we would be able to tell where your performance is at any given time. So if you come home, if you play sports or something's going on in your life or something's happening in school and the school wants to help you out or get, get data on where you're at, mm -hmm. they could check you at any given time. And they could share this information with your physician or if you even have a parent living across the country that you have on this tool and you know nothing about what's happening over there, this is something that they could be taking the tool, you could see the data and share with your parent's physician also. So self-administered, Yes. play the video game, Yes. and what do you find out afterwards? After the game's finished, what, what, what we do is establish what's called your, your, your profile. So when you take two practice sessions, you play four game sessions, we actually, all your lights clicking in are green. So if anything happens after that, which would cause it to change, it could be disease, injury, illness, or anything that would cause your brain performance to change. Now we look at that and we share it with people that you want us to share it with, and we share it with you. Right. So I'm sure people look at it and say, 
but that's not that's not valid. You need, where's the data? Is it scientifically proven? Tell me a little bit about well, you know, the the back the backstory of kind of the, well, we, we do, we how do, sophisticated this well, is. Well, these these are tests that have been used that have been uh, used for over fifty years. We just took those tests and webified them. And we tested them in the market, and we've had people write papers on them. We got thesis on them from University of Texas on it with Dr. George Kondraski and his students. And we found out that um, the sensitivity and the validity in the test is very good. And um, it, it's so good that, hey, listen, we have um, companies like Novacare Physical, uh, Physical Therapy, Select Medical, that are using 2,000 of their clinics around the country now. They're launching it in all their clinics for reassessing a patient after 10 days of being treated by a physical therapist. So the, the data and the science is there. Uh, we provide that for anybody that wants to see it. They just can sign up on our website and we send them that information. So I know there's other people using it to track and monitor the performance. Who else is using it? Uh, we have um, attorneys that are representing uh, retired NFL football players <clears throat> that are involved in the concussion settlement. There's a lot of- uh, So football players? Yes. Using it how? Um, they're using it, and, and their attorneys are using it in the facet that they want to pre-screen them to see if these guys' data are going to show that their cognitive, neurocognitive, or neuromotor functions at a at a specific level to take them on to the next level to even give the uh, a neuropsych evaluation or neurological evaluation. So, give me an example of what they would be asked to do in um, the video game. They would they would actually, <clears throat> and when we fir when we first started out. They um, came into the, they, they flew these um, individual players into the office, uh, into our office, Hall of Famers, everybody that um, were in, that were in a settlement. And we've had- uh, How excited were you for that? Oh, uh, that, that was beautiful <laughs> because, you know, we, we found out that we had a tool that was very valuable and that somebody really needed it and that, you know- I meant just in awe of who was in the room with oh, you. Oh, it was, it, was, it was exciting. <laughs> when, you, when you meet these Hall of Famers, I, I don't want to say too many their names out here, but when you meet these guys, they, you seen play on Sunday on the football field. Um, it was very, very exciting. But then when you seen some of the results of some of these football players, it was almost tear jerking mm -hmm. because some of these guys weren't performing well. And then there were guys that did perform well. So the, the data showed when you correlated it to the neuropsych evaluation and a neurological evaluation, it showed that some guys really have problems. And you, get, you become kind of close to these guys, so it kind of hurts you. So give me an example of, of an actual part of the part of the game that they would play um, they would, to illustrate. Just to give you an example, we have a section of the game that is short-term memory recall. So we would flash five shapes at different times, and then we'd put all the shapes on the page, and they would have to click the shapes in the order that they seen the shapes. They couldn't get none of them right. That shows short-term? Short-term okay. frontal temporal lobe damage. And then we would do the same thing with five numbers. Flash five numbers up and you would have to click on the numbers in the order that you had seen the numbers. Zero. Those guys get one or two, but these guys were getting zero. Now remember, they had to take this two, three practice sessions, two, three game sessions, just to establish their normative ranges. Then we would give, just so you understand, we would give, we would give the test to, and we would have, at the beginning of the test, long term, we would give auditory commands, which we would say eight words, 10 minutes later, we'd say 16 words. They get 95, 100% of those right. Just like they could tell you stories of things that happened a long time yeah, ago yeah. when they played football. And we'd <clears> do the same thing with colors we, or, or pictures. We could show them eight pictures and show 16 pictures later. These guys, get, they were like 100% right. These are guys that would get zero right on short term. So they, you know, they didn't know what was going on. They were just trying to do the best they could do while they were taking the test. We have a magic wand. Look out five, ten years from now. What, what does the world look like because of RC21X? I think we're going to be able to v provide data on the cloud at a, a, around the globe that people would be able to um, take control of their own brain health. People that are wearing the wearables, the Fitbits, the digital scales, um, the the map my fitness type ex um, things that count their steps and map their routes. Um, people that are really looking at taking care of their health. Um, we would have data around the globe on a cloud that they could get at any given time, share with their physician, not just walk into a doctor's office and say, hey, I'm here for my physical. But when the doctor says, so how are you feeling? that they can pull that out and show it to their physician. 
That's what we look at. And with this data, we also expect to be, you know, providing a lot of artificial intelligence, a lot of intelligence about how is this individual performing? Where where are they at at any given time? <clears throat> do they do they have enough of the um, um, I want to call it uh, requirements to perform this task? So you know, some people have different requirements where they score on yeah. certain tests by speed and accuracy and strength and endurance. So for people who might think this is like uh, Luminosity or some of the other pieces of software out there that you can use to work on your memory and to work on, how, how is it different? Is it, and what, what makes well, this different than anything else out as an alternative? L Luminosity, Fit Brains, those type of games are brain training tools. And that's what they do. We are a monitoring tool. We monitor your performance on uh, on a simple game that stays the same, but it's randomized. So you can't remember the tool. You can't remember what you're taking. It's randomized that you may get any order or different test at so any the shapes, given time. So the shapes, that shaped part of the test, different every time? Always randomized. Yes, it's always randomized at any given time. Um, the, the, the More the brain training games are kind of a lot of different games that are like global. So if somebody tells you, hey, listen, we want you to play this brain training game, it's really going to help you and it's going to increase this and that. Well, I'll tell you what, well, won't you establish your profile first? Let's see where your profile is and see if it's going to really grow your, so your profile. establish the baseline. Yes, establish your profile and your baseline and see where this really is going. What, what are the alternatives right now? Most people are in the training space. Um, some people are trying to get into the monitoring space. Um, Dr. Kondraski from the University of Texas Arlington, which is an individual we really truly look up to, um, is a biomedical engineer that worked with us with the general <clears throat> systems performance theory behind the tool, is an architect of text messaging and auto check. So his algorithms that we have are definitely, we feel, the best thing out there in the market. The other tools out there, there are, there are not many that are trying to monitor your brain performance. What's the biggest criticism people have? This is new. This is something different. Um, I mean, we're not a concussion test. There's concussion tests are out there um, that they'll test you one time. And if there's an incident within a year or a year and a half, they'll check you again. Well, we're not that. We're a, we're a lifestyle. We want you to take this as much as you possibly right. can. So complimentary. We have Adam Simon from Sorora in, 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 in Startup Health. That's actually... Um, sounds like what you're doing is complementary to those kinds of solutions. Yes, yes. We, we, we want to be we want to be in that monitoring space, um, and we want to monitor, monitor, monitor. And if, if you look at our website, we says it says thermometer for the brain. That's what we want to be. We want to be that standardized tool by testing as many people as we possibly can, grab as much data as we possibly can, and be the thermometer for the brain. Gotcha. So what's the origin of RC21X? Where did um, that come from? RC21X came from uh, Roberto Clemente Jr. and I met when I was uh, representing another product that was called the InfraScanner. And um, he founded me on LinkedIn, which is another company that was founded in Pittsburgh. And um, we began, became good friends. And um, as we became friends months later, we never had a name for the tool that we had been working on. And um, I said, Roberto, man, your dad was a hero to everybody. And he died trying to save people's lives and take medicine to the people in Nicaragua after the earthquake and all the things that were going on down there with the government. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, that's the tool. That's what we want the RC21X to be. We want it to be something that can change lives and help save lives around the world. You know. Somebody's coming down with early set Alzheimer's or dementia. We want to be able to pick up those subtle changes when that PET CT or something can't pick it up and look at the molecular change in the brain. We want to pick up little subtle changes to get you in front of your physician so that he can make a decision to help you out and prolong your life out longer. Excellent. So you feel passionate about what you're doing? Oh, I love it. So this is been, a great thing in the world. It's so the greatest thing in the world. You've been an entrepreneur for a long time, but you, yeah. you hadn't been in healthcare before. No, haven't how, been in how healthcare. How different is it? Um, it's, By the way, it's, it's a trick it's, question because it's, it's so different. You know, but. it is. Yeah, it's so different. But you know what? I, I it, the best, the nicest thing that happened is when we were working with Innovation Works in Pittsburgh, and Mark Kavicki had seen an email come over from a gentleman named Larry Miller, who's our, who was our pretty much our mentor. Mm -hmm. And at the bottom of the page, it says Startup Health, Startup Health. And uh, we, Mark, started reading into that, and say, Hey, Clarence, we better apply for this. And in being able to be with people that want to transform healthcare and think outside the box yeah. and make things different 
really gave us an opportunity. Now we're in front of all these VCs, these different companies that we talk to every week. Um, we just got funding out of Pittsburgh from Innovation Works IW. They want to fund us some more. And so I, I got to give a lot of credit to you guys. You guys are really helping us get down that road, and it re it's really important. I think we're really going to build something great here together. Yeah, no, listen, we're building this army of entrepreneurs with the right mindset and the yes. people dedicated like you are because of these stories that drive you to do stuff more than most entrepreneurs would do. Um, what's your biggest surprise or lesson that you've learned since you jumped into healthcare entrepreneurship? Um, I, I, I would say that um, it's a long road. It's it's not a short, fast road. Um, people, they look at us, and, 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 I, and I always tell people, I said, man, if, if I look back eight years and said, God told me, Claire, it's going to take you eight years to get where you're at right now. And I would say, man, I had to go get a job. I, I just, I don't think I would have been able to do it, but you know, um, it, I, it last, we lasted. And, and I think we're past that time and it's a long road. It's not a short road. So there's no quick fix. It takes a team. It yeah. takes good people around you. I was just lucky and blessed to have people like Mark Kavikia, um, Chris Fletcher, um, Tom Moore, and Paul Shergott. And, and we have a team in a house that, you know, we did our own patent. Um, we wrote it. Um, it's pending now in Europe and it's in the U.S. Um, and we had some good people in Pittsburgh to want to see us succeed. So we, we raised our own money. We did this, you know, under $500,000. We put this tool together and it's unique. And we were able to establish relationships with University of Texas Arlington and the Human Performance Institute, one of the top scientists in the That's world. That's fantastic. Did you assemble the team from the, your past? How did you guys all come together? Yes, Mark Mark was a gentleman that, uh, actually we played Little League Baseball together. And, no way. And yes, really? and, we, and we ended up going to high school together. And um, Mark was, he was about, Mark's like three years, two years behind me, and he was probably one of the smartest kids in the school, and he was writing software back in high school. And um, so when he came back from Shanghai in China, and he had already been working in a digital space with um, actually streaming TV on the internet, which he has a patent for, um, we began to um, um, talk, and I said, Mark, I really need your help on this. And so Mark put the first foot out, and he said, Clarence, I like this, and that's, I'm willing to help you. So, you know, those guys stuck around and we, we weathered the storm and now we're really looking upstream and I think things are headed the right way. And we, we've also formed relationships with um, some NFL players like Ray Lewis, who's taken us into Baltimore City Public Schools with mm -hmm. the Polytech Institute. And also we're gonna do some work down in Miami with Ray Lewis also. Fantastic, fantastic. Yes. All right, last question. Yes, sir. What do you? What's the last book you read, or you want to read, or that you're reading right now? Uh, you know what? I, I was in the airport today, and, and I'm serious. I just went to go see the movie Sully. Yeah. And, and let me movie. tell you something. Yeah, I was watching this movie, and I said, my son and I went on a Sunday night, and, and I said, wow, man. And they were talking about human performance, and the in the in the human side of performance, and why he made the decision that he made, and nobody took that into a decision-making yeah. process and and I told my son I said you hear that they're talking about human performance factor and making that decision that he made if anybody else would have made that decision with 35 more seconds yeah. on it when they did it in the simulator yeah, that, they, yeah. they crashed that, the plane that, that was friend, yeah so, so think about this human performance I had no idea about that story by the way before oh, I saw the movie I gotta read the book I have to read the book. I'm going to read it because I want to get the details of it now and really apply it to what we do because I think human performance ties into everything that everybody does in their lifetime. Fantastic. Hey, it's been great to have spent the last, it's been six months? Yes, yeah, six, six, six months. Six months. Steve, thank you. You and Mark, we're looking forward to helping you build the company, but thank really you. just excited for what you're working on and thanks for thank you, doing Steve. what you do. Thank you, and Steve. And thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much.